Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're testing a six and a half inch full range driver from Fostex, model number FF165WK. So uh, I had featured this driver uh, uh, 10 years ago on my old blog and I had done a number of projects and posts on that. And so I've posted a link uh, for each blog post if you wanna go back and do some reading on that. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different video in that I'm gonna actually do a sound clip test of the driver's sound with a microphone so you'll get a chance to hear its sound quality. And I'm going to be implementing a contour circuit that corrects for a few of the frequency response issues with this driver. And so you'll get a chance to hear the before and after uh, with the effect of that contour network. And I'll also be introducing uh, a plan set that includes the contour network as well as a small floor standing tapered transmission line enclosure. So it'll include the assembly detail drawings on the, on the cabinet, including the contour network. And so we'll get to that in a bit. And so why this driver after 10 years? And so one of the reasons I wanted to bring this, you know, dust off this driver and test it again is that I've developed quite a wealth of data from testing other driver models and I wanted to see how this driver compared against, for example, the Mark Audio uh, CHR120, which is also a six and a half inch full range driver. And just to see how it looks with the Arda measurement software that I've been using for the past five years. And then I'm a bit nostalgic about this driver. Um, just if you see here, the amount of, amount of time I spent playing around with this driver 10 years ago. And so I wanted to see if I could develop a contour network using more recent skills that I've developed uh, with my crossover skill. <laughs> I guess I don't really know how else to say it. We all progress in our own personal abilities as we uh, learn more in this hobby. And so I've done quite a few crossovers in the past five years. And so I wanted to see if I could extract uh, just that little bit more performance out of this driver uh, using uh, my own ability with passive crossover networks. And so um, the other thing that's interesting about this driver is if we go to the published data here, you can see that this is part of a series of drivers. We're using the second largest in the series. So that it ranges from three inch up to eight inch. And so we're using the six and a half inch driver. Now the driver uh, has the published data in the spec sheet. And so you can see here that Fostex is showing a relatively flat response. And then by 10 kilohertz, it's falling pretty sharply. So the other interesting thing about this driver is because it does fall um, starting at around 10 kilohertz, it does open up the door for experimentation with various super tweeters. And so if you are a hobbyist and you want to just kind of see what's out there for super tweeters, whether it's ribbon or the bullet style super tweeters, um, and just to kind of get an idea of how the sound can be improved, you know, improving the overall sound stage width, um, then that's something that's appealing because you don't have to do a low pass filter with this driver. You can simply add a super tweeter without doing anything as far as a low pass on the full range. Now the overall appearance, I really like the appearance of the driver just because it's got those various shades of gray. It's got the uh, brushed uh, aluminum dust cap, which I should mention too, um, has a special ridge on the dust cap. And so Fostex claims that the special ridge that runs vertically through the dust cap uh, helps distribute some of the modal breakup that occurs in the high frequencies. And so they've done an overlay comparing a conventional dome dust cap against what they call their ridge dome. And so that's uh, another interesting feature of the driver. So it uses a double layer paper pulp based cone. And so it has a pulp base with a canaf as a second layer. And so Fostex is claiming that the canaf layer provides very high speed propagation of the sound through the cone. So like we mentioned, it has the aluminum dust cap, has a low loss urethane foam surround, and then relatively high sensitivity at 90 D, 92 dB. And so you can see here, just looking at the images uh, for the Fostex drivers, they do use relatively large magnet structures. And so they are still relatively low QTS drivers if we're comparing it against other brands such as Mark Audio. 
So I've covered uh, some of the features of the driver and so let's get into the measurement side. So we do see very high sensitivity even through the mid-range and so we're approaching 95 dB through the mid-range. And then we have a plus 5 dB rising response from 300 Hz up to 8 kilohertz. Now we can see that the treble does fall off, but it doesn't have anything too severe as far as, as, far as frequency response anomalies. We see a surround, what I would speculate as a surround resonance occurring at 4.5 kHz. And then way, way up into the upper treble, beyond the audible range, is a very high Q peak at 19, or sorry, 18.5 kHz, which is outside of the audible band. Um, for comparison and context, I've simply republished the raw frequency response of the Mark Audio CHR120, which is the same size, 6.5 inch. However, this is using an aluminum cone uh, instead of the paper. And so if we do an overlay between the two drivers, the red is the Mark Audio and then the blue is the Fostex, we can see that they're actually very comparable as far as their linearity and when the breakup starts to occur. But I would say that the Fostex, if we ignore the peak at the 4.5 kilohertz, we would say that the Fostex is actually quite a bit uh, better behaved in the upper treble as we see some pretty significant anomalies uh, due to that aluminum cone, aluminum dust cap from the Mark Audio starting to break up and cause some pretty severe up and downs in the response. Now going back to the Fostex, I did do off axis at 15, 30, and 45 degrees. Um, so we can do see that at the 30 degrees off axis, we are losing directivity, or sorry, did I say that right? We're, we're seeing quite a bit of directivity, um, especially as we move 30 degrees off axis. And so this driver is direct, very has very um, narrow directivity, which is typical of this size format. Um, but we do see it is relatively consistent. When we see consistency there, it's indicating that there isn't uh, too many breakup modes in the diaphragm. Looking at the time domain, starting with the burst decay, we see that surround resonance coming in pretty strong. Uh, and yet we do see this uh, outside the audible, audible band, we do see this dust cap ringing right out to 24 periods. Um, extending this out uh, to 50 kilohertz, just to see that ringing, um, it's quite an impressive uh, resonance that we're seeing there, and luckily that's uh, completely, uh, like I mentioned four times already, I don't need to mention it again. So, um, Spectral decay actually is quite clean, uh, with the exception of that uh, surround resonance, so we're seeing very fast decay and the driver is pretty free of any other issues. Now the next thing I did is implement a correction network. So what we're trying to fix here is the mid-range peak that's at one and a half kilohertz and then the resonant peak that's at five kilohertz. And so when I, I didn't mention the mid-range peak, but specifically what we're looking at is how the response is flat and then we do see a jump in the output right around that one and a half kilohertz region. Now, the ear is very sensitive to this region and so we wanna correct that and flatten that out. This isn't a resonance per se, but it is the characteristic of the driver where we want to uh, bring that down. Now, the next thing that we're going to address is the resonant peak uh, that we I call the surround peak. And so it's consisted of uh, two parallel LCR uh, correction networks. And so you can see I've blocked it out because I want to uh, provide the plans on my site for this passive network as well as the cabinet plans. And so the first section here corrects the mid-range peak and then the second section of the network corrects the uh, five kilohertz peak. And so now we can see the effect of the contour network. So we've drastically brought down that one and a half kilohertz region. And then the second portion there, we've brought down that resonant peak. So now uh, I conducted the off axis again uh, with the contour network in place for 15 and 30 degrees off axis. And so you can see here, very consistent uh, off axis response. Now it still has the narrowing, but that's to be expected. The main interest here is going to be, is going to see what happens with the time domain and whether we've improved this aspect. And so we can certainly see uh, with the burst decay that things are much, much better with the contour network in place. You can barely see the uh, res surround resonance coming in there. 
Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do um, before I get into the cabinet plans, I'm just going to play a sound clip uh, with the before and after of the contour network so you get a chance to hear the effect of that. And also I'm going to play the Mark Audio driver and then also the Shallow Horn 1928 which uses the 3 inch version of this Fostex from the WK series. So what I'm going to do is play a soundtrack through the speaker and then you can hear the resulting sound in this microphone. And so here I have the speaker set up. I'm going to play a song here and then move my microphone in front of the driver. Okay, so I have the uh, network installed and Next in the test is this Mark Audio CHR120, so you can see it there. And so we're just going to repeat the soundtrack with this. Now this has the contour network as well that we developed about a year ago. And so just uh, just keep that in mind that it's been optimized. It's kind of the similar uh, thing that we had done with the Fostex. So here we go. The other uh, speaker that we're going to play today is the Shallow Horn 1928 with the Fostex FW208HS, and then the actually the full range that's used in this is the the um, Fostex FF85 uh, WK. So that's the three-inch version um, of the same series that we we're testing today. So next thing I wanted to touch on was the 2286 tapered quarter wave transmission line enclosure. And so I'll post a link to the plans there in the description. So what I wanted to do was come up with a very simple and elegant cabinet design that's easy to construct and is suitable for medium to smaller listening spaces. So I put the guitar in the, in the rendering there so that you could see the overall size to get a sense of the scale. Now this is the in-room response with the speaker placed 30 centimeters from the rear wall and so I've used 1 dB per octave smoothing so that you can get a sense of the overall trend. Now don't be alarmed by this base hump. This is normal for an in-room response. I think most people are used to seeing an anechoic or outdoor response which is flat but as soon as you bring it into the room, you're going to get boundary reinforcement, bringing up those lower frequencies. And so all I wanted to show today was the bass extension, that we're getting good bass output down to about 50 hertz. This response is uh, highly smooth, and so you can ignore this portion of the frequency response. So I just have a few renderings uh, showing the overall look of the cabinet, 25 centimeters wide by 90 centimeters tall. And so the construction is comprised of a mitered 
corner for the top and sides and then the baffle sits into these dado features so it's a very standard cabinet construction and so if you look at the back here we've mitered out the back panel as well so it'd be a fully glued assembly with the rear vent so you can see here the internal tapered aspect so this is on a three degree angle and so the assembly and detail drawings include uh, you know drawings for each component you know and a drawing for the front baffle and a drawing for this internal piece and so the construction is relatively simple and I've placed the driver near the top of the cabinet so that you can experiment with different tweeters uh, sitting on top super tweeters so uh, that concludes the video the Fostex FF165WK, 6.5 inch full range driver. Take care and have a great day.